Hello everybody, it's Jenny Taylor here. I'm really excited to join you even though I wish I could be there in person. I'm up at Utah State today taking part in a leadership symposium and so I couldn't be in Salt Lake where you all are. But I didn't want to miss the chance to talk with you for a few minutes and especially to find out who the winner is of this year's Major Brent Taylor Service Award. Facebook recently reminded me that it has been 12 years since my husband first ran for office. 12 years! Now, I guess if I would have thought about it long and hard, I would have come up with the same number pretty easily because my husband decided to run for city council in North Ogden when I was what I felt like nine and a half months pregnant with our third baby. In fact, when that baby was born and the campaign was in full swing, we would take our four-year-old daughter on her scooter and our two-year-old and the newborn in the double stroller as we went door to door to door handing out pamphlets and brochures talking about Brent Taylor for North Ogden City Council. And that newborn baby who rode in the back of that double stroller just celebrated his 12th birthday. It's crazy how time flies, and even crazier to think of all that has changed in those 12 years. Now, even more crazy than all of that is the fact that this is the third year we're handing out a Major Brent Taylor Service Award. Three years since he was killed. That blows my mind. I spent 15 years married to him and living on opposite sides of the world most of the time. And yet now we've spent three years living on opposite sides of the proverbial veil that separates this life from whatever it is that's in the great beyond after. In the three years that have passed and the 12 years since he first got involved in city council and in the 18 years since we first met and said I do, I've had a lot of time to think and look back over all that has changed. Some of the needs, some of the concerns, some of the issues are the same. And yet we live in a world today in 2021 that Brent Taylor would not recognize if he were to magically come back home after having left in 2018. Things have changed drastically in terms of politics, military, finances, global relations, housing, everything seems to have just snowballed so much in this last year or so. And as I think of all of this happening, and those three years, and those 12 years, and those 18 years, my mind keeps circling back to four simple words. They're little, they're easy. By themselves, they don't mean much. But those four words, when taken together, heed a call to action that I want to share with each of you today. And I hope you'll then go home and share them with your communities in your cities and towns. Those four simple words are now more than ever. Now more than ever, we need service-oriented leaders. Now more than ever, we need leaders who can look across the aisle or erase the aisle and put aside partisan politics. Now more than ever, we need leaders who can stop pointing fingers and start asking the pointed questions, even and maybe especially of themselves. Now more than ever, we need leaders who know how to serve, but even more than that, we need leaders who know how to call those who they lead to serve. You and I all know the joy of serving other people. That's largely what has driven you to run for office or work for your city or be completely underappreciated, underpaid, and overwhelmed in your job right now. You know what it means to serve. And yet I'm finding a new magic, a new power a new empowerment in my life in these past several months, as I've not only had an opportunity to serve, but to create opportunities for others to serve. Now more than ever, we need service-oriented leaders who know how to call those they lead to serve. We all know the beauty in a community and the unity that comes after a fire, a flood, a tragic disaster, North Ogden is the epitome of that after my husband died. People I'd never met came, they stopped by, they brought meals, they sent flowers, they posted well wishes on social media. Everyone came together as they served my family and my sweet little kids. You've done that in your community when you've had an earthquake or that fire or that flood or that horrible windstorm or maybe the woman everyone loves has just been diagnosed with cancer. And yet my challenge to you today in 2021 as we look ahead to 2022, is to not just find opportunities to serve after a tragedy, but to proactively create opportunities for your citizens to serve in order to avoid more tragedy. 
the tragedy of division, the tragedy of distraction, the tragedy of despair. You have the capacity within yourself and whatever office you hold or position you fulfill to call others to serve. Be creative. Sometimes it takes a little more work to have someone else do the work or to create the opportunity to serve or to organize that service project. It's like kids and cleaning the kitchen. I can do it so much faster myself, but it's a lot better if I let them do it and experience the joy of that labor. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you live, look for opportunities to create opportunities for your residents to have opportunities to serve because that's what we need now more than ever. In the almost three years that have passed since Brent was killed, I've continually had opportunities to speak, to think, to reflect. I've felt every emotion in the book, I promise you, several times. But the conclusion I came to early on after Brent died is the conclusion I keep coming back to. And I'm sure you've heard me say this before, but I will say it again. We best honor those who have been willing to give their lives for us by making something of honor out of the lives they have given to us. And that is what we need Utah's leaders of every single city and town to do now more than ever. Thank you.